We begin with the Speaker of the House riding the Trump elevator and pushing every single button, lighting him up not just on his inability to work on bipartisan legislation, she says, but on his capability, even asking his family and aides for an intervention. So, uh, so, but the president again stormed out. I think what first pound the table, walk out the door. What next time? Have the TV cameras in there while I have my say. That didn't work for him either. And now this time, another ten temper tantrum. Uh, uh, again, I pray for the president of the United States. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention for the good of the country. Well, prayer comments almost suggest you're concerned about his well-being. I am. Can and the well-being of the United States of America. As you've likely heard by now, this all comes after the president walked out of a meeting with Democrats led by Nancy Pelosi yesterday. It was a meeting that was supposed to be about infrastructure. Instead, he headed right to the Rose Garden, told reporters that he refused to work with Democrats until they stopped investigating him. Now, behind the scenes, a source who spoke with the president about all this yesterday tells me that he was furious, saying privately he believes the Democrats are trying to ruin his life and the lives of his family. Now, notable, this all uh, comes on the backdrop of not one but two federal judges siding against him and with Democrats in their quest to get his financial records. Let's get straight to the White House, to White House correspondent Abby Phillip, who is live there. Abby, uh, the president has been listening, I'm sure, to the House Speaker. Before that, he sent out a series of tweets. What are you hearing from your White House sources today? Well, Dana, this is a White House trying to change the narrative around what happened yesterday. Uh, yesterday uh, unfolded in such a dramatic fashion uh, that the president now seems irked by the perception that he was angry, that he stormed out of the room with Pelosi and with Schumer. And White House aides are now doubling down on that, saying that that is all false and that this was a calm, deliberative decision on the president's part uh, to reframe the conversation on Capitol Hill, giving congressional Democrats an ultimate him. Listen to Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president, uh, downplaying the president's mood as it res relates to what happened yesterday. It's nonsense. And then think you're going to come here and get productive work done. Let me just also say, somebody was standing right there. It is nonsense and inaccurate for anybody to say the president was fuming, temper tantrum, stormed out. Uh, he's in a rage. If you report that, you don't have your facts right. He was very calm, very deliberative. Walked, in, walked out the way he walked in, never raised his voice. He wasn't the one, frankly, who looked shell-shocked. Well, Dana, as you know, President Trump was, in fact, angry, angered by what Pelosi had to say. But it has been building for some time. He started that day uh, tweeting angrily about the Mueller investigation and the fact that Democrats seemed to want to try to, in his words, have a do-over. And so all of this has been building until that comment really uh, tipped him over the edge, our sources have been telling us. And so, uh, you know, the White House is trying to reframe this. But President Trump this morning also also tweeting and doubling down at his ultimatum to Democrats. He says, when the Democrats in Congress refinish for the fifth time their fake work on the very disappointing Mueller report finding, they will have time to get the real work of the people done. He adds, move quickly. The question now turns to, how far is the White House going to go with uh, with this ultimatum? Are they really going to halt everything on Capitol Hill until these investigations end? And we kind of got mixed signals this morning. Uh, you know, uh, the, the White House is also saying President Trump believes that Democrats simply can't do both things at the same time. But you also have some aides, including Kellyanne Conway, Mark Short, the vice president's chief of staff, saying they still want to do USMCA. They still want to do all these other priorities, including the budget deal. And so uh, there is a possibility that they will absolutely need to work with Democrats on some of these things if they want to get them done. Darryl. That's absolutely key. It's one thing to find a common ground on infrastructure. It's another thing to deal with must-do legislation like the debt ceiling, never mind uh, the budget, which is a basic function of Congress that the president is supposed to be working with them on. Thank you so much, Abby. Appreciate it. And the president suggested that Democrats in Congress aren't getting anything done while they investigate him, as Abby just reported. It was echoed by his press secretary this morning. I think it's a complete lie that uh, Democrats in Congress think they can do two things at once. So far, we haven't seen them do anything. 
Nancy Pelosi has had the majority in the House uh, for months and has yet to accomplish a single thing. They haven't gotten, they literally haven't gotten anything done since she's taken over. So is the White House right about that? Well, let's bring in a man with the answer, CNN's Tom Foreman. Tom, you have a fact check. Dana, you just heard that. Sarah Sanders says House Democrats literally haven't gotten anything done. And the president has echoed that thought, tweeting, it is not possible for them to investigate and legislate at the same time. Let's ignore for a minute that history says, yeah, it's absolutely possible. It's all obviously an attempt by the White House to shut down these congressional probes into the president's actions. But here is the problem. While Democrats in the House are pursuing 11 investigations related to the president, they've also been plenty busy passing 235 pieces of legislation since January. Now, sure, some of these are smaller matters like naming post offices, but they've also taken on some major issues, among them sweeping bills to address ethics and campaign finances and government reforms and bans on discrimination, universal background checks, the Paris Climate Agreement, just to name a few trying to keep the U.S. in that agreement. Granted, many of these items are things the president and his Republicans do not want, and many of them ran into a stone wall when they went over to the Senate and they were met by the Republican troll there, Republican control there under Mitch McConnell. But to say the Democrats did nothing with their control of the House is categorically not true. What's more, 17 items approved by the House were also passed by the Republican-controlled Senate, including legislation to end the government shutdown, address a drought out west, and deal with conservation issues. So a do-nothing Congress, hardly. Dana? At least not a do-nothing House. Uh, since they've had the majority. Tom Foreman, thank you so much for that.